Last but not least, we'll remove the mainspring from the winding arbor. To do this, we will use a commercial Ollie Baker style spring winder, which I will demonstrate. The Ollie Baker has several features that make it a favorite among clockmakers and hobbyists alike. Its flexible design will accommodate most common mainsprings. All the adjustments clamp solidly in place. And for added safety, there is a ratchet mechanism on the winding handle that will keep it from flying around should it get away from you for some reason. The ratchet can be set to lock in either direction depending on whether you are winding or unwinding a spring. Some spring winders use a chuck like a chuck on a drill motor that holds a drill bit. The Ollie Baker uses the chuck from your letdown key set. This saves a lot of fiddling and assures that the winding arbor is held firmly in place. Just pop the proper size letdown chuck into the headstock of the spring winder and then insert the square end of the winding arbor into the chuck. In our case, we have a main spring with a loop end. That's the end that slips over the movement pillar. We have to have some way to hold this end of the main spring to be able to wind or unwind the spring. The Ollie Baker provides two possible methods to hold the loop. First, there is a movable fixture with several hooks that can capture and hold the end of just about any type of mainspring. This L-shaped one would work well for our task, as there's a long horizontal section that can slip into and hold the loop. But there's a better alternative for our particular style mainspring. There is a short bar sticking out of one side of the base of the tailstock. This bar will line up perfectly with the loop of our mainspring. Oops, the bar is on the wrong side. Not a problem. We'll just pull the tailstock off, turn it around, and reinstall it. Now that everything is in the proper position, Move the tailstock towards the mainspring arbor until the pivot end of the arbor is held firmly in the cone-shaped cup at the top of the tailstock. We want both ends of the winding arbors supported or the arbor might bend from the force created as we wind and unwind the spring. Check to make sure that the loop end of the mainspring is held by the short bar extending from the tailstock. Now tighten the clamp screw to hold the tailstock firmly in place. Before we proceed any further, we need to put on gloves and safety glasses. Mainsprings are powerful and can do considerable damage to human flesh, so it's best to be protected. To get our mainspring off the winding arbor, we need to remove the clamp we installed when we disassembled the movement. To do this, we must wind the spring up to make it smaller in diameter so the clamp will slip off. Simply turn the winding handle, but wait, which way do we turn it? Take a close look at the loop end of the mainspring. See the way the spring arcs up from the loop end? To wind the spring, we must turn the winding handle in the same direction as the arc of the spring. Set the winding ratchet so the winding handle turns in the proper direction. With one hand on the winding handle, cup your other gloved hand over the top of the mainspring and slowly wind the spring until the C-clamp comes loose. You can release the winding handle and let the ratchet hold the handle in place while you remove the C-clamp and set it aside. Now adjust the ratchet so that the winding handle will turn in the opposite direction. Once you do this, you can't let go of the winding handle or it will spin out of control as the spring unwinds. Place your gloved hand over the mainspring and slowly turn the handle to unwind it. As the spring unwinds, it may try to bulge out of the sides. Keep your fingers around the spring to hold the sides in place until the spring is totally unwound. Now we'll release the tailstock and slip it out. Our next task is to remove the spring from the winding arbor. Remember, there is a pin or hook in the arbor that is caught in a hole on the inside of the mainspring. We have to get this hook to let go so it will slip out of the spring. To do this, retrieve the letdown chuck from the spring winder and put it back in the letdown handle. Put the letdown key over the winding arbor and then grasp the spring firmly, working your fingers between the great wheel and the spring, forcing the spring away from the wheel as you try to pull it off of the arbor. Now twist the letdown key back and forth until the hook lets go and the spring is free from the arbor. 
The arbor is now free, and both the arbor and the spring are ready for inspection and cleaning. Our movement is now fully disassembled. At this point, we would thoroughly clean and inspect all the parts and make any needed repairs. Each of these subjects is complex enough for a video of its own and not within the scope of this tutorial. Before we can put the whole movement together, we need to make sure any sub-assemblies we took apart are reassembled. In our case, we took the main spring off the winding arbor, so we have to put it back together before we can install it in the movement. If we had disassembled any other sub-assemblies, like the center arbor with its cannon pinion spring and clutch mechanism, we'd have to reassemble those as well. So let's get our main spring back on the winding arbor. Slip the winding arbor into the center of the main spring. Check to make sure that the spring is coiling in the proper direction so that the spring will wind properly. Remember the ratchet wheel and click on the winding arbor determines which way the spring winds. If you install the spring in properly, it won't wind, and you'll have to remove the spring from the winding arbor, turn it over, and reinstall it. Make sure the spring hook on the winding arbor catches in the hole in the center of the main spring. If it doesn't catch, you won't be able to wind the spring. When we were twisting the winding arbor back and forth to release the spring, we may have deformed and widened the center area of the spring enough that the hook will no longer catch and hold. You may have to do a bit of fiddling with needle nose pliers to carefully reform the center area of the main spring, making it smaller to fit more tightly around the winding arbor. Once we have the main spring caught on the winding arbor spring hook, we need to install the proper letdown key chuck in the headstock of the spring winder. Next, slip the square end of the winding arbor into the chuck. Install the tail stock, making sure the bar that catches the loop end of the main spring is facing in the proper direction. Just as when we remove the spring, bring the tail stock up to the winding arbor until the pivot end of the winding arbor is securely held in the cone-shaped depression in the tail stock. We have to capture the loop end of the spring so we can wind it, so slip the loop end of the main spring over the bar at the base of the tail stock, just as we did when we removed the spring. Now it's time to put on safety glasses and gloves. Check the ratchet on the spring winder to make sure the handle turns in the proper direction to wind the spring. If unsure of the proper direction, look at the loop end of the main spring. To wind the spring, the winding handle will have to turn in the direction of the arc as it curves up from the loop end. When everything is ready to go, place your gloved hand over and around the mainspring to make sure it stays in place, then slowly turn the winding handle. Use your gloved hand to guide and control the spring so that it winds up properly on the arbor. Wind the mainspring all the way so the center of the spring closes tightly around the winding arbor. This will secure the spring around the spring hook so it won't come loose. Once the spring is wound, slip the C-clamp over the spring and hold it in place with your gloved hand. Now flip the winding ratchet so the winding handle turns in the opposite direction and slowly let the spring unwind into the clamp. Now it's safe to remove the main spring assembly from the spring winder. Check the click to make sure it is engaging the ratchet wheel and then move the click spring back onto the click. Great! Now the main spring is back on the winding arbor and ready to be installed in the movement. All of our pre-assembly work is complete, so let's get started putting the movement back together. Mm -hmm.